Dear friends, we have our next speaker, Shahmatova Yelena Vasilyevna. Please come to the stage. Yelena Vasilyevna was born in 1956 in Krasnoyarsk. In 1981, she... Uh, Mm-hmm. Entered the State Institute of Theatre Parts, Faculty of Theatre Studies. She specializes in theatre studies. In 1985, she graduated the School of Gittes, Faculty of Theatre Studies, Department of History of Foreign Theatre. She worked as a freelance correspondent for the newspaper Novy Vzgled, Moskovskaya Pravda, senior researcher at the art theory sector of the Russian Institute of Cultural Studies in Moscow, associate professor of the Department of Cultural Studies and Management in Culture the State University. State University of Management, Associate Professor of the Department of Philosophy, Head of the Scientific Department of the Russian Institute of Theatrical Art. Her research interests include culture and art of the Silver Age, dialogue of cultures of Russia and the East, theater and art of the East, philosophical anthropology, philosophy of the religion, philosophy, culture, philosophy of art, as a person, art and literature. Her total dissertation was written about the mythology of the East in the philosophical and esoteric context of the culture of the Silver. Yelena Shahmutova has published more than 60 scientific papers that have been published in leading peer-reviewed scientific journals and publications recommended by the Higher Education Commission of the Ministry of Science and Education of the Russian Federation. She is a member of the Union of Theatrical Figures of the Russian Federation, candidate of the art history, doctor of philosophy, associate professor, head of the scientific department of the Russian Institute of Theatrical Arts, GITIS. Russia Moscow. Shahmudov Yelena Vasilyevna now will present her presentation on the influence of Blavatsky's philosophy on the culture and the art of the Silver Age. Yelena Petrovna Blavatsky in 1875 in New York organized the uh, Theosophical Society in New York as she was there. She was such an energetic organizer, and uh, she knew a lot about um, uh, teachings we are starting to uh, make research into today. Actually, she was the one uh, who gave the Western world a deep synthetic view of the preservation in the Eastern esotericism of the knowledge underlying the original ideas about the world characteristic of uh, in the European consciousness, uh, with how fragmentary ideas about Eastern philosophy at the West were combined into a single system that reveals the unity of the world's religious and spiritual culture. Blavatsky had a huge, uh, not yet fully identified and appreciated influence on the European culture of the second half of the 19th century. In England, her influence extended to George Russell and William Butler Yeats. In France, she was visited by the assistants of Dr. Shaku. Uh, Flammarion also visited her frequently. Le Marie, the publisher of Revue Spirit, uh, the magnetizer Yvette, a friend of Baron de Baudet, a famous author of works on parapsychological topics and the occultist, the magnetizer Saint Yves. France Blavatsky organized the esoteric Lodge Isis and the mag- uh, and uh, there was the magazine La Red Lotus published. In Isis, her attention was attracted by medical students Gerard Rancos, who soon took the pseudonym Papus and in 1888 organized his own Lodge Hermé. Blavatsky herself felt the tragic inconsistency of her ideas with the materialistic worldview of the 19th century. She hoped for recognition of her ideas in a hundred of years. The influence of Blavatsky affected the very spirit of the era which tended to esotericism. In 1880, her travel notes from the caves and wilds of Hindustan appeared in the Russian press under the pseudonym of Radabai. Blavatsky's essays were a real revelation for the Russian reader. The first time in Russian in her popular presentation, the foundations of Hinduism and Indian philosophy became the property of white cultural community. 
and figurative living language. He described the nature of India, its wildlife, the way of life of people and rulers, ancient customs and beliefs, noted some elements of the similarity of the four cultures of India and Russia, suggesting the unity of the proto-Aryan roots of Indo-European peoples. From the pages of her books, India appeared before readers, the cradle of human spirit, the beginning of the principles of philosophy, and the treasury of secret knowledge of antiquity. India is the ancestor of other nations, the birthplace of all lost arts and sciences of antiquity. To study India meant to go back in the footsteps of humanity to its origins. Blavatsky's books proved that the ancient Hindus, Egyptians, Chaldeans possessed extensive information in many areas of human knowledge and achieved especially striking results in the field of physiology and psychology. This knowledge consisted constituted the sacred doctrine and was transmitted to the adepts orally through rituals and mysteries. For India of the present and the future, H.P. Blavatsky has not died and will not die. Prince of Tomsky wrote, he was seconded as the author compiler to um, Tsarevich Nicholas a long trip to the East. In the chapter on India, he touched upon some details on the Theosophical Society in Madras on the outskirts of Adyar and its founder. Uh, Uspensky, philosopher, author of the books The Fourth Dimension, Tertium Organum, Terror Symbols, rushes to India along the roots of Blavatsky. In November 1914, due to the outbreak of the First World War, after interrupting his long journey to the East, he returned to St. Petersburg and began to give lectures and stories about his travels, gathering thousands of audiences. Eugenia Herzig recalls how she and her sister eagerly reread Uspensky's travel essays and then invited him to their salon in Moscow in Krychetnikovsky Lane. He talked about his wanderings to India, for example, following the footsteps of the book of Radabai in the south of the Blue Mountains where the tribes of Toads live and the dwarves of Kurum believe, possess magical powers, he showed their pictures, confirmed some of the wonderful facts told by the Russian writer. Russian society found India at the turn of the 19th and 20th centuries to be a promised land, a magnet that powerfully attracted the thoughts and aspirations Nikolai Gumilov wrote, you see a train station where you can buy to get to India of the spirit. That these are the verses from the lost tram. Konstantin mm -hmm. Balmond, Ivan Buni, and Anton Chekhov visited India. Maximilian Volution was going to go to India and food, giving this journey a religious meaning. After all, pilgrims went to the Holy Land on food. From Paris, where he intended to get to know the whole European culture in its original source, and then discarding everything European and keeping only the human, go to study with other civilizations, search for truth to India and China. And not as a traveler, but as pilgrim on foot with a bag on his back, trying to penetrate the spirit of the unfamiliar entity to take a walk to India where people and deities are together, Belmer Klebnikov dreamed. But Nicholas Rory had to walk this path. His journey to India was predetermined by the fate of Russian culture at the turn of the century. The energy of the creative thought of Russian art gave Rory strength to implement the return of the prodigal son home to the forefathers of his own culture. The Silver Age, following the Renaissance algorithm, turned to the pre-Christian Indo-Aryan roots of the Russian culture and found its ancestral home in the India of the spirit. 
Vladimir Solovyov, who had a great influence on the culture and art of the Silver Age, came to the conclusion that Plato's philosophy is essentially the same, only developed in the taste of the Hellenic genius. Christianity was based on the same thing, only with the addition of some historical facts. And finally, the new Western philosophy comes to the recognition of the same truth that 1,000 years ago were confessed on the banks of the Ganges. At the turn of the 19th, 20th centuries, it was Indian philosophy through the widespread esoteric theosophical teachings that largely determines the worldview of cultural figures of unrealistic trends. Blavatsky came to the idea that the basis of all ancient religions is the same teaching of wisdom. She called India the birthplace of this teaching. Ancient Egyptians and Jews borrowed their knowledge from Buddhist missionaries. Mesopotamia, with its center in Babylon, turned out to be on the path of the great migration of peoples, and Babylonians became the first people to accept the ancient Indian wisdom. Blavatsky proclaimed Neoplatonism and Gnostics as the heirs of esoteric wisdom. She recognized the identity of the sacred doctrines of magicians, pre-Vedic Buddhists, Hierophants, Egyptian thought, or Hermas, Chaldean Kabbalists, Jewish Nazarenes. In her sacred doctrine, she gave the Western audience a broad idea of Western wisdom and suggested that esoteric religious knowledge to one degree or another is a van Eventually confirmed by scientific discoveries. Blavatsky was looking for answers to the eternal questions of existence, how to achieve immortality, expand the sphere of human habitation to cosmic limits, overcoming death, and how to stand on a par with God, now in the laws of nature and cosmic evolution. Her ideas turned out to be consonant with the time, experiencing systematic crisis, and was looking for answers to global questions of existence. The law of evolution, spiritual and material expressed for man and reincarnation, was defined as the third component of the main foundations of theosophy, along with the first two ones, asserting the unity of all things, brotherhood, and the law of karma, the law of causes and consequences in the spiritual as well as in the material world. <laughs> For symbolists who approach their theory to the systems of Hindu philosophy, Blavatsky revealed the whole con continent of ancient knowledge. Constantine Belmont wrote to his wife to remember how once on our first trip we wandered near the Charing Cross Hotel in London and accidentally stopped at the Theosophical store. I remember buying Blavatsky's The Voice of Silence at that time and taking a catalog of Theosophical books, these two little books, of which the second was a good guidebook played a big role in my life. Beautiful as a jewel, the little book, The Voice of Silence, was the morning star of my inner flowering. It introduced me to the number of precious books with which I have spent so many joyful and enlightened hours in recent years. In Valery Brusov's historical essay, The Teachers of Teachers, the Most Ancient Cultures of Mankind and Their Relationship, the theosophical concept of anthropogenesis about races alternately replacing each other, yellow, red, black, and white ones, is given. For the white race that exists today, others have experienced their heyday and death. Subsequent races will come in turn to replace those who have completed their evolution task. In total, the evolutionary cycle, according to the theosophical concept, consists of seven races and its development is nearing completion because humanity at the turn of 19th and 20th centuries already represents the fifth race, the four, the end of the universe is just a few manvantaras away. The eschatology of the Bible and the death of legendary civilizations of Lemurs and Atlanteans were involuntarily projected onto the modern era, giving rise to a feeling of great Dis disintegration from among the esoterically enlightened allied. Well, from Lemuria, there was a way to the Red Kremlin. This was the result of cosmic evolution seen by Valery Brusov in the current events. 
And here is the testimony of Sergei Solovyov, neighbor and schoolmate of the future writer Andrei Belli. The Bugayev apartment was saturated with the spirit of India. The whole family read Blavatsky. Bora initiated me into the mysteries of yogism and spiritualism, taught me to do magic tricks and produce Chinese shadows. The research of the literature of the Silver Age, Vadim Krait, points out the esotericism of this period as the main feature. Only this circumstance and nothing else explains the depth of the spiritual achievements of the Silver Age, which remained in our modern culture, inexhaustible and unexplored thoroughly, and of course unsurpassed, he notes. Almost every significant point of the era tends to be to one or another form of mystical search. The block is in, uh, pardon, Alexander Block is inspired, inspired by insights of Vladimir Solovyov. Andre Belli reads the Upanishads in his early youth and later gives himself to anthroposophical studies and practice. Brusov and Gumilov studied the treatises of European occultists. Volution is interested in theosophy, anthroposophy, and Bhagavad Gita. Vyacheslav Ivanov is attracted to esoteric knowledge of various kinds. Almond is fond of Zendavesta, Lao Tzu, Hinduism, Buddhism, and Russian sectarianism. No matter how charmingly pretentious the ego futurism of Igor Severianin and his friends at the Academy of Ego Poetry was, and he too received a creatively liberating impulse from the theosophy of Blavatsky more than from the poems of his teachers, Fofanov and Lohvitska. The Secret Doctrine by Blavatsky was a reference book of the composer Alexander Skrabin. Boris Schlotzer, the Borata of Skrabin's second wife and philosopher, noted that it was from the winter 1907-1908 when the composer became interested in theosophy. The content and plot of his main work was defined, the mysteries, as the history of human races. Moreover, as an artist, he assigned himself the role of a catalyst for the evolutionary process. His mystery was to become the final court of the world drama, after which the day of universal ecstasy would come. Scrabbing, according to Schlotzer, believed in the singleness, the uniqueness of universal ecstasy that he wanted, after which there would be no new cycle and Brahma would rest in himself. He dreamt that India would become the scene of his mystery since the history of modern humanity began there and it should end there. Especially for this purpose, it was necessary to erect a temple on the shore of the lake so that its dome, dome would be reflected in the mirrored surface of the waters as the full sphere. The beginning of the mystery was to be announced by the ringing of bells to the calls of which the participants of the mystery would gather, scribing thought of the action of the mystery solely as an esoteric act for the specially initiated ones who wanted to open a special school for the training of adapt was going to conduct the orchestra himself. Moreover, he also wanted to involve both the orchestra and the choir in the universal sacred pantomime. Everything had to be in constant continuous motion. He would have even have liked to deprive architecture of its inherent monumentality by inventing columns of light. The action of the mystery was to last for seven days and unite in a single synthesis of all possible sensations, all arts, and even living nature. Changing pillars of light permeate the temple, the sense of earth, incense, tropical trees and flowers, the colors of sunrise and sunset, burning torchlight, light touches and caresses, kneeling and kissing, complete and the overall picture complement of the overall picture. Taste sensations had to be included in this synthetic action through the sacrament of communion. During the performance of the mystery, each participant's participant would have uh, to relieve his mystical memory the entire history of the origin and development of mankind with its horrors, wars, suffering, and deprivation in order to be freed forever from the nightmare of civilization and dissolve in the common ecstasy of joy and exultation. Scrabbing dreamt that he would be able to harmonize people and nature in the single synthesis. He wanted to attract tigers and snakes as participants. The fulfillment of the mystery, according to Scrabbing, 
should have led to unprecedented events as a result of the rebirth of humanity. The present moment is one of the moments of dematerialization, he believed. The universe longs to reunite with the one, and the culminating aspiration of humanity must be filled by a mystery, a one-time and unique act, the last accomplishment, it would be universal death and a new life, a world cataclysm that destroys the physical plane. The eschatological concept of mystery presupposed in the end of the world, after all the creative values of the world, Aeon, were united, the last chord would complete the action which should unite all mankind in a single spiritual impulse. This was how the idea of conciliarity, the union of various individuals as different shades of the one, was to be embodied. The influence of H.P. Blavatsky spread to the Russian avant-garde. Thus, Michael Larionov, in the preface to the catalog of the exhibition of iconographic originals and Lubki, 1913, quotes as the epigraph from, from the book of Radha Bay, making it clear to the viewer that he doesn't just expect folk and objects, but together with artists takes part in the action of detachment from temporary fetters, since from now on the valiant task of the artistic work at the angle of time are not considered. The preface was intended for the advanced audience who had mastered at least, at least Blavatsky's books. During the reign of Assyrian king uh, Gamorab, an exhibition of Lubke of the of 14th and 10th centuries, Russian, Chinese, Japanese, French, and others were arranged. They caused just the rise in the feelings of the order of the order of the arts. <clears throat> that time was killed by the timeless and extra spatial. The resulting sensation reigned as a self-sufficient infinity. In this infinity, Paul Cézanne may turn out to be a contemporary of Ramses II and the creator of the scribe Herbert Randai instead draw the blue sky of X in Provence. Time plays no role in determining the laws of what exists without its intervention. Art is immortal, so futurism can be transferred to Assyria or Babylon and Assyria with the cult of goddess Astarte, teachings of Zarathustra, of what in what is called our time. Lubok is perceived by the artists of the Silver Age as much more modern more art than the painting of the wanderers in Russia. In Lubok, there is a consideration of the subject from different sides and different points of view, which appeared in Europe by Picasso and Braque. Lubok simultaneously demonstrates the impression that can be obtained by bypassing the object with the eye. And this primitive consideration of the object from different points of view and its representation on the plane destroys the principle of direct perspective that has been established since the Renaissance. Kazimir Malevich's supremacism is also connected with the esoteric searches of the era. The name of Exhibition 0.10, where the black square was first presented, is the reflection on the unity of the universe and deity. From the non-existence zero, being is born, the cosmos, which is, can be described with the help of ten digits. The iconographic reflection of this idea is the black square, the deity of the new cosmic era, which realized its unity at the macro and micro levels. This is the creativity of the intuitive mind. The face of the new art, the square is a live, royal baby. The number four is also sacred to the Pythaga Pythagoreans. It's a perfect square, each side of which is absolutely identical to the rest ones. It's an emblem of divine balance expressed geometrically. All the forces and great symphonies of physical and spiritual nature are inscribed in the perfect square, and the non-predicate name of the one whose name would have remained unpronounceable was replaced by the sacred number four, the most binding in the oath of the ancient mystics that practice. Elena Blavatsky notes in her work, the ice is unveiled. 
Pythagoras, according to her, was initiated into all the mysteries of the ancients, spent over 20 years in the sanctuaries of Egyptian temples associated with the magicians of Babylon and received instructions from them in ancient knowledge. The key to Pythagorean dogmas is the general formula of unity in multiplicity, the one passing into the many and emanating the many. Elena Blavatsky writes, this is the ancient doctrine of emanation expressed in a few words. Everything is from him and through him and in him. Emphasis added by me. Uh, Blavatsky proves that this is a purely Indian and Brahmanian teaching. The mystical decade 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 makes 10 is an expression of this idea. One is God, two is matter, three is a combination of a monad and a duad, one and two, bearing the nature of both, representing the phenomenal world. Tetrad, or form of perfection, expresses the emptiness of all, and decade, or the sum of all, includes the entire cosmos. The universe is a combination of thousands of elements, and yet it's an expression of the single spirit, chaos for the senses and cosmos for the mind. This whole combination of numbers expressing the idea of creation is Indian. The combination of the first four numbers gives us an octave, the ratio of the number of vibrations is two to one, a fifth, three to two, and a quart, one to three, and reflects the harmony of the world, the music of the spheres. Today is the day of freedom, which is conceivable only at the dawn of the great eras. Another art reformer, Vasily Kandinsky, says, the only criterion for the artist's creativity is the divine essence that connects him with the world. All men are holy if they are intrinsically necessary. All men are sinful if they don't come from the source of internal necessity, he believes. Ideas of, of Vasily Kandinsky, who came to the complete rejection of form in the visual arts, also largely comes from theosophy. In his book on the spiritual and art, 1910, he defines anthroposophy, anthroposophy of uh, Steiner and his uh, theosophy of H. Blavatsky as the fact of great spiritual movement. Abstractionism of Vasily Kandinsky proceeds from the idea of painting as pure art that will serve the divine. For him, painting is a composition based on harmony and the court of colorful and pictorial forms that independently exist as such, which are caused by internal necessity and constitute a whole in the common life that has arisen in the way. The whole is, first of all, the artist's intuitive achievement of being one with the universe. Kandinsky's creative method resembles the traditions of Teos, Deo masters who listen to the rhyme of the universe. The last abstract expression in every art is number. He comes to this conclusion unexpectedly approaching the great numerator, Klebnikov. Velimir Hlebnikov put forward the idea of the new human community, the state of time, and worked persistently on its fundamental laws. The poet was sure that humanity should realize its unity and make gradual surrender to power of power to the starry sky. History, in his opinion, is an exact science, as exact as science. Button is as exact science as mathematics. Based on calculations according to the Brahmin calendar, believed that time had already begun. To count the new Kalpa on the 25th of December of the new style of 1915. In his approach to the study of history, Klebnikov proceeded from the assumption that the cyclical nature of time was well aware of the ancient Indian doctrine of reincarnation and the repetition of history that influenced other philosophical systems of the Far East. At the university, he studied Sanskrit and exact sciences. In his mathematical predilections operating with numbers images, he approached the ancient Indian and ancient Chinese tradition of honoring numbers as the basis of the universe. 
a significant role in the formation of mystical poetics of Hlebnikov was also played by the works of Blavatsky, especially The Secret Doctrine, which described cosmic evolution and revealed the numerical code of the universe. The laws of time keep him restless, and he creates a unified scientific and scientific teaching about time. Time, in his understanding, is not a historical category, where each event has a specific point on the axis of space-time coordinates. This time is multidimensional and contains that all the events of the present, past, and future simultaneously. Time, according to Blavatsky, is only an illusion created by successive alternations of our states of consciousness throughout our journey onto eternity, and it doesn't exist but rests in the dream where there is no consciousness in which an illusion can arise. Present is only a mathematical line separating that part of eternal duration, what we call the future, from the part what we call the past. The clairvoyant is able to adjust his inner self to the perception of the world soul, a universal intermediary who records everything that happens in the world on the substance of atoms and see vivid pictures associated with the history of something. If a person is able to see the past, then in the same way he can penetrate into the future. According to Kabbalists, the future exists in the astral in, in the form of an embryo or germ, just as the present existed as the germ in the past. The person is free in his actions, but the way of his actions remains unchanged. And according to the principle of musical harmony or mathematical correspondences, which is the same, it's possible to predict an event with confidence. The artist at the level of his subconscious eye, which is not, is able to sense from where the wind of the gods of the world blows. I wrote the shifters in pure unreason, notes Hlebnikov, and only experienced its lines. The rank is called with a sword on his back. The poem was written on the eve of the First World War in 1912. And feeling how they later became emptiness fell, but the temper is thin and the spirit of the raven pulls. I understood them as reflected rays of the future thrown by some conscious eye into reasonable sky, the belts cut from the shadow of fate and the spirit entangled in them remain until the future becomes the present, when the waters of future where the mind bathed dried up and the bottom remained. Klebnikov himself was amazed to, um, to the depth of his soul when he realized in 1917 to which state in his dialogue teacher and pupil written in the same 12th year he predicted the collapse a conjure the artists of future. He wrote to keep accurate records of the rising and setting of the stars of their spirit. Klebnikov decided to express his intuitive premonitions with the help of the language that doesn't allow double reading, the language of exact numbers. Numbers are the secret script of ancient civilizations, a cipher that is yet to be solved by future generations. Numerical regularities established by Klebnikov correspond to the secret doctrine of the ancients. Pythagoras, whom Klebnikov called his follower, from the future to the past, proceeded from the idea of number as the basis of everything that exists. I find a hymn to the single principle underlying all phenomena in the poem Numbers. Klebnikov, who checked harmony with algebra, knew how to extract the root from negative units of time. The square root of minus one is gust. The shadow spirit evoked at the scenes, people minus physical body in Blavatsky's terminology. I knew, he writes in the mysteries Kufia Skifa, that uh, square root from minus one is not less substantial than one, that when there are one, two, three, four, there are minus two, one, minus one, minus three, and uh, square root from minus one, minus two, minus three. Uh, there is one person and another natural series of numbers of people. There, of course, are both square a root from people from minus two people from minus three people. 
etc. This mathematical awareness of the existence of a parallel world arose in Halebnikov under the influence of numerous so-called currents so popular in the Silver Age. Blavatsky considered the phenomena of spiritism as a legacy of ancient magic. Costs existed before the advent uh, of modern spiritualism and phenomena similar to ours occurred in all previous centuries, she wrote in Isis Unveiled. The discovery of the East and the testimonies of numerous travelers about miracles performed by Brahmins, yogis, dervishes, lamas, which couldn't be explained from the point of view of materialism, led to the fact that the official European science diligently suppressed such facts, and those scientists who still tried to talk about the objectivity of such phenomena worked by scientific community. Uh, following the recognition of those phenomena, it was necessary to recognize the existence of God, to whom European society, through the mouth of Nietzsche, pronounced the death sentence, inexplicable phenomena lying beyond the reality given in experience, demonstrated the tangible existence of the spiritual universe. Lavatsky's influence affected the appeal of the culture and art of the Silver Age to irrational and mystical beginning, which allowed us to open the inner universe of the man and look into the depth of the psyche inaccessible to reason. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much for your thorough proof of the idea that the voice of Helena Petrovna had a significant influence on the information and the cognition of the world. And of course, this represents the cultural and creative sides of people of the art community because it's you know, the great painters and artists who are here to convey the great ideas and to make us go forward and you know, study this the secret doctrine will in the future allow everyone to discover the inner universe. So thank you so much for your presentation.